Today we bring you an Occupy Brooklyn TV exclusive interview with Mark Adams. Adams was sentenced to 45 days in jail for charges associated with an action on December 17th of last year. He's the first activist convicted and sentenced to jail time in a group trial for an Occupy Wall Street action. Seven other defendants were sentenced to community service, including Bishop George Packard, Reverend Earl Coopercamp, and comedian Ted Alexandro. Adams was released from Rikers Island Prison Complex on July 16th after serving 29 days in jail. You have been called the first Occupy Wall Street political prisoner um, from the movement. To what extent is your case or your, the sentence that you served in jail on Rikers Island unprecedented in the movement? Um, you know, before I answer that question, I just want to say that uh, many people within the movement have done time, um, whether it was um, at the tombs or they've done time for personal reasons. Uh, so I do want to, you know, uh, just say that before I answer this question. So, uh, however, as far as strictly talking about Occupy Wall Street as a movement is concerned, um, this was possibly, if I remember, the third case uh, from Occupy that went all the way through trial. Um, but the first that ended up with convictions, um, including the first that ended up with a jail sentence. Uh, the other cases didn't. Mark, tell us about Trinity Church's involvement in the case. They have tried to claim that they support Occupy, the underlying goals of Occupy Wall Street, but we know that their participation was necessary for the case to move forward. Yeah, from everything I've heard from uh, from my my lawyer and uh, from other folks, uh, is that uh, if Trinity wouldn't have uh, been present, uh, the case couldn't have gone forward. So Trinity always had the option to step back and uh, you know not 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 press charges. Uh, however, Trinity, uh, I feel uh, had had an agenda. They wanted to uh, make sure that uh, their their property, which they feel is their property, and uh, folks had. Um, gotten on their property without permission, they wanted to press charges. They wanted to make sure that their, uh, the message was heard loud and clear. Um, yes, Trinity says that they uh, support the movement by opening up their uh, public use space, which is Charlotte's Place, uh, and their bathrooms. And um, However, these are things that they are open to public anyways. Uh, it's not that Trinity is going out of their way, or Rector Cooper is going out of his way to uh, support the movement. Uh, to me, supporting the movement would have been to say, hey, we forgive you your trespasses, and um, you know, uh, this, it's not church, a, ch a church's or an, a religious institution's business to put people in jail. Um, and uh, there have been other, uh, they, they had um, the faith community from around the world, uh, including Bishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa, had commented on the, you know, uh, this, uh, this whole action going back to D17. And it, it, we had a lot of support from the faith community. I mean, we had a bishop go into the park first. Uh, and uh, it's, just, it's just unprecedented that a uh, religious institution decided to press charges uh, on folks who were seeking um, uh, sanctuary on um, church uh, property. Uh, or I don't even know if church should own property, but anyways, church property. And um, they, they could have, uh, this, could, this could have ended up better and different than it did. You mentioned the role of private property in the case. Can you talk about what claim Trinity Church has to the property that you're char that you were charged with trespassing on? Um, from all the evidence that was presented in court, um, Trinity apparently uh, inherited this property from the Queen of England in 1705. Um, this this lot, uh, along with all the other property they uh, have inherited in uh, Lower Manhattan. Uh, it, it came from the Queen. Uh, it's not property that they purchased. Uh, I don't even know how uh, how legitimate it is for uh, for a church to own millions of dollars worth of property. Uh, and they are the largest real estate uh, holding company in Lower Manhattan. Um, and this is a church we're talking about here. However, there is a family in Pennsylvania that has been uh, uh, is in a dispute, legal dispute with Trinity over the ownership of this uh, this lot, this Duarte Square lot. So um, that's the way it stands right now. Can you tell us about the support that you received while you were on Rikers Island? I heard one guard said he hadn't seen so much mail since Lil Wayne was being held there. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it was uh, you know. Um, <coughs> 
the the whole uh, thing was difficult. Uh, I have never, I before this, I had never been convicted of a crime ever. Uh, doing time was difficult. I'm I'm still dealing with it. Um, you know, emotionally, it just takes time. Um, but however, it could have been a lot worse if I didn't have the support of people uh, within the movement and support of my comrades was just overwhelming. I mean, I was getting letters almost every day. Uh, I'm going to say every day. I was getting um, books in the mail. I was getting. I was allowed two visitations a week uh, with three visitors on each visit, and I would get those. And there was it a was, wait list yeah. for, for those visits. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's what I heard. And I was like, mm -hmm. really, like I didn't, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have any expectations because I didn't want to be let down. But I knew my my family, my Occupy family, was behind me, and uh, they came out in full force. And it was really, un it was, it, it was, it was much much tougher. Uh, doing uh, any sort of time, even if it's like 10 days or whatever, um, when you're not eating. Uh, you know, being on a hunger strike uh, to, uh, what for me was very hard. Uh, and it could have been, and, you know, more so than physical, emotionally it was very hard. I'm still trying to recover from that. However, it, the, the support that I got inside, um, inside jail and support I got when I got out of jail has just, it's just, you know, it's, it's support that people don't even get from their, from their blood relatives and uh, it's been amazing I've you know I've had two parties one before and one after um, you know all these books and mail and just it's just been, been this outpouring of love and support so when people ask me what kind of world we're trying to build within Occupy Wall Street this is the kind of world we're trying to build a culture of care um, and we sometimes people don't don't realize that that's what we're trying to do here do you want to say anything about your reasons for going on hunger strike while you were in yeah, I um, I will say that um, going in, I felt very powerless. Um, it was it was almost like I had um, I didn't have um, the tools of protest uh, that I usually have on the outside. I couldn't when go, you were in prison. Yeah, when yeah. I was in prison, and when I went in, it's not like I could hold a sign or rally or march and just you know let my grievances be known. Uh, and I knew that nobody would care. Nobody knew me on the inside. Um, I could write all the letters I want with, wanted with uh, communiques, but it wouldn't have helped. Uh, for me personally, drawing inspiration from many other revolutionaries who've come before me, and uh, even within the movement, uh, you know, folks like uh, Jack Boyle and and then Diego and and uh, my friend Mallory and and Shea, who have done hunger strikes within Occupy Wall Street. Uh, it was it was I knew that I could count on that to to let. To, to protest in my way by using my body and to be, let it be known that I, I felt that I should be free at this moment and I'm not. So uh, for me, it, going on a hunger strike was actually a very powerful political tool of protest. And, um, and I've gotten the support I've needed to come out of it. Uh, and it's been a lot of support, um, you know, both medically uh, as well as like uh, emotionally. So it's almost like it was a way of retaining some personal power or even like a sense of humanity. Yes, I felt that this is something they couldn't take away from me. They could take away all my belongings, they could take away my signs, they could take away my, uh, my even, uh, even my rights, uh, but uh, this is something they couldn't tell me, hey, you can't do this because I could. And I, and, I, and, I, um, and I felt very powerful doing that. And uh, you know, I felt that the movement felt, felt very powerful uh, through what I was doing. And uh, if it wasn't for the support, I, I probably wouldn't have, couldn't have done it, especially the last week was very tough for me. Um, you know, a lot of people say that once you've gone through uh, the first week or first 10 days, it gets easier. For me, it, just, it, it wasn't the physical. It was the emotional part that was very, very, very hard, very taxing, so mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned this kind of culture of care as being central to what Occupy Wall Street is trying to create. What would you say were the goals of the action that took place on December 17th? And to what extent do you think those have been achieved? I, I think um, the, the, the one of the things that, you know, not talking specifically about the case, but I think one of the things what, that we've shown through our actions in Occupy is that our goal is to open up space, open up space that is public, uh, should be public, and to open it up so we can, um, we can build an alternate community where we can show when, when, so that we're showing through action what kind of world we wanna see. 
it's easy for somebody to say, well, we don't want wars and we want more books and we, we, want, we, we want food for all, housing for all. However, we've tried to like, establish that community by using public space and building this culture and this community. And we need space for that. We can't do that without space. And we had that space for a short time at Liberty Square. We've, tri we've tried to show that at Union Square as well as actually sleeping on Wall Street. Um, so our, uh, I think our goal uh, was and remains to this day to try to uh, build this community by using space. And uh, it's not that we can always go into a space and are going to be allowed to be there. So we try to like uh, use our resources and, and uh, use education as a tool um, to to build this world and so people can come and see like we 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 actually are walking the walk mark is there anything else that you want people to know about this case or about the the trial of december 17th um i'll, I'll say that um, more about you <laughs> yeah I, I will say that um if you know many of my comrades right now in the movement are looking at some very serious charges um some of these cases whether they're the eviction cases um and 17 uh, and actually even some case some cases left over from d17 that had nothing to do with the park um I'll, some of the folks are looking at some very serious charges and um you know i want them to know that the movement stands behind them uh, no matter what happens, uh, there is a very strong community uh, that is ready to support you. Uh, if you are going to look at you know, time, and I hope that nobody else does, uh, but know that there are people out there um, who are supporting you and are going to write to you and are going to take care of you. And um, even if you don't have family here in New York, like I didn't, um, Occupy will be your family. They're going to step in and, and everything will be taken care of. You know, I didn't have money in my commissary. Folks within Occupy took care of that. So I had money to buy juices that can help sustain me uh, or to buy red letter writing material. And, uh, and you will be taken care of. And I just want folks to know that um, it's, it's hard, but it, it just, it, it's easier with the support of the Occupy family. Mm -hmm. And I know just from my own experience of doing jail support and, and writing to you while you were um, serving your sentence, that it's really, I think, opened up a new awareness of the hundreds of thousands of people who are behind bars, you know, for any number of politically motivated um, reasons. And um, so, yeah, and just wanting to, to broaden our awareness of the, of the prison industrial complex and how it works and, and to support other prisoners. Um, and so is there anything that you want to ask people at home to do or ways that they can, you know, show support for people who aren't as fortunate as you to be to be on the other side yet? Yeah, right now there are many political uh, prisoners in jail doing time like Hammond and others who have been part of like uh, our political prisoners. And it's important that, uh, you know, folks pick up a pen and paper the old fashioned way because that's really the only way you can write to prisoners. And um, and if you are going to say write to your f to your as a political prisoner that you are supporting, write a letter to them, but then write a second letter to somebody else who's doing time. And, um, you know, a lot of times, yes, we say, you know, write to political prisoners, but write to anybody because I've met many folks on the inside who don't get any letters. And it was hard for them to see me getting all these letters and somebody would like come and be like, can I read your letter? Because they aren't getting that support. They're being punished by a, by a system that um, that is punishing them for some very minor offenses that shouldn't even be crimes to begin with. So I think it's an uphill battle for us, but it's an important battle to fight against the prison industrial complex. But meanwhile, uh, supporting uh, folks in there by just putting money into their commissary or, or just writing them letters, I think that's something that anybody at home can do. And y y there are letter writing campaigns for political prisoners that happen in all cities, especially in New York City. And uh, folks get together and do that. So please look it up. and. Um, and ask around and you will find uh, these communities that do that and take care of uh, political prisoners. Awesome. Mark, thanks so much for your courage and your strength and for the inspiration that you provide for all of us in the Thank movement. You. Thank you so much.